Do you want a hug, James? No. I want I want a no. torch to burn down Comcast. No, I'm, I'm hugging you, Burn James. it to the ground. Love, hey, not guys, hate. Mm. We started this episode mm-hmm. four minutes and 20 seconds into being live on Twitch. So welcome to DFH Locker Room number 17, the Burning Comcast edition, <laughs> Jam Torch edition. I'm well, here, tor- as always. No well, yeah, there is no jam because Doomsy <laughs> forgot the jam. Me and James brought the peanut butter and the bread, but no jam. Uh, so I'm here with Doomsy with, uh, without jam, and I'm here with James Watt with the bread. And we're here to talk about Rocket League, Rocket League news. First order of business, some guy named Golden Boy, never heard of him. He's asking, is there going to be any pigeon dancing, perhaps? Not yet. Not just yet. We have given the song to James. We will not tell you what the song is. But James will be recording it locally for himself because he's got to practice, you know. Like, this is a choreographed dance. If he yeah. messes up, he has to do it again. So It's going to be a little late on the Olympic-style voting, but I'm, yeah. I'm expecting execution ranking on yes, that but, out of 10. But his is going to be like a recording <laughs> and not live, so he can get those uh, 10 out of 10s. Uh, so once that is live, it'll be on his YouTube. We will blast it out. Should be live before next week's show. If there is a next week's show, I might not be here. Um should be live within roughly a week. We'll give James. Maybe a little bit longer because he might be getting props. He might be. We have discussed, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, but James, have you started to work on, you know, like work on the uh, choreographing? I'm not going to give away any details. Okay. There's okay. no details. All right. So we'll wait on that. Me and Doomsy patiently await that. But James, speaking of your YouTube want to bring up your uh, Behind the Land video. Now, I'm going to be honest. I did not watch it yet. Oh, my God, Gibbs. <laughs> I saw it was 30 Gibbs. minutes long, and I was like, I don't got time for this long. shit yet. Yeah, I was Dude, like, you, oh I do God. not have time for this yet. So I am that sorry. I, I did not watch it yet. I plan on watching it, but I did uh, live it. So I was like, you I did don't live necessarily it, have to watch it. it, it, it you got to watch it. You got to watch it again. I know. I will. I just haven't watched it yet. But if you want to explain your... Behind the land yeah. video. Doomsy, did you watch it? I did watch it all the way what, through. Did, would you Would you recommend it? I would very, very much recommend it. I thought it was beautiful. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's all I need. That's all I need to say about it is that endorsement from Doomsy. And, Doomsy's uh, seal of approval. Yeah, <laughs> it's like getting Roger Ebert's, you know, five star <laughs> whatever. So yeah, yeah. Basically, anyone who hasn't seen it, if you are interested in what uh, life was like behind the scenes of the RLCS land, just go check it out. It's thirty-five minutes though, and you have to watch the whole thing in one sitting. Not like Gibbs, who (laughs) is like watched one minute and he's like, "Oh, this is thirty-five minutes long," and then he just not stopped. I mean, I watched like twenty seconds to be fair. I was like, "This is a (laughs) long video. I'm gonna have to get some tissues ready and for tears." You will need some tissues. (laughs) (laughs) God, (laughs) yes. It's just that oh, good. It's just that good, yes. Uh, but yeah, definitely go check out that video. It shows uh, a lot of the players, supposedly. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but... You're uh, in it a lot, Just kids. like... Oh, am I? You're That's famous. good. I didn't even like remember when you recorded. And Fisho like, recorded me a lot, too, I think. One time I was really drunk. I hope that didn't make his video. Again, I did not watch that one all the way through. I watched the first five minutes, and all That's I saw wild. was the video arm like in front of their spot on the screen. And I was like, well, that sucks for them. But uh, the jib arm... But that was VIP seats as well. I know, <laughs> VIP seats, the the perfect treatment. Maybe they should have planned their seats better as soon as they showed up. Maybe <laughs> went to they the left. Went, they went there to like sit down and was like, ah, oh, VIP seats, let's see how these bad boys do. Oh. <laughs> ah, fuck. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, probably like the jib was out of the way at first, and then it's like, oh, the show's going live. Oh, shit. Now we see a jib arm. Oh, James actually subbed to me, too. What a nice guy, except I don't have Twitch alerts on for this, so... No recognition for James, because yeah, no, don't um, worry. It just says th- it. All it says is doesn't even watch my video. Feels bad, man. <laughs> I know how to read. Don't worry. I know how to read. It's okay, James. I love you. I just yeah. haven't watched it because you know I'm with you 24 seven as it is. You'll, my wife is jealous. Just watch it with your wife. Watch it with your wife. That's Have actually not a bad idea. Season. I did not think about that. I should It'll watch be it good. with my wife. That's it's not like a bad an idea. episode on Netflix. 35 minutes. There you'll you enjoy go. it. All right, I will do that. Uh, on that, we actually have some pretty decent news here. Something called the RLCS is back already. Like, after uh, crying your eyes out for 35 minutes, then you see, yeah, in three months there's going to be another land. So, RLCS Season 2, all the dates are announced except for the live final. They just said it's within that three-month window, but they don't have 
specific dates yet for it. But the main difference is now just one qualifier. There's no two separate splits, so there's new, uh, so there's not two spots to get in. It's this one time, mm. this one qualifier, and if you're in, then you're in f- for the next three months. If you're not, then you're going to have to wait for three months. So it's all going to come down to one weekend, basically, for all of these teams. Doomsie, as a player, how do you feel about it all coming down to one weekend of best of fives? Well, from my past experience, I quite like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess it's because, you know, our situation and other situations, like if you just lose in the first one or don't get into groups, it's kind of pointless to even go into the next one unless like you can get first because yeah. yeah so i think it's much better to have just one solo thing so yeah i think it all brings up the hype rather than having like, oh the groups and done and then the online finals are oh, and then it's like and we're gonna do it all over again it's like no this yeah. is the online finals the group stages there's only one you get in it it's league sorted. play now not group it, stage god well oh, yeah so they league, renamed it, it but... it's, yeah but like if i say group it's stage group people stage. know sure. people know what i'm talking about you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like it's like you have the thousands of teams, and it gets chopped down, chopped down, and then boom, yeah, you have it'll be yeah, it, it, it's way simpler to explain because we were on uh, we were on the show and like with lucky the lucky <laughs> bounce situation, oh my people God. were like, "What even? What is happening? I don't understand this." Cosmic didn't even make the finals. How are they going to the land? What is happening? My brain doesn't. Uh. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, the before the online will be finals. just much better for viewers. Yeah, for sure. Because like I had to do like a twenty minute uh, video before the online finals of like how do these teams make it, and plus like that was only one team that really mattered was Super Saiyan Avengers, but then Seedon was also all thrown in there like a weird mix. So now it's gonna be a lot easier. We go into league play now uh, with eight teams, and all eight teams from each region get paid thirty five hundred dollars right away. So that's the same amount as the online final winner from the first one. So that's a lot of money yep. for these teams, like for their time because it's over. Four weekends, basically five weekends, because of the midseason classic. So it's um, so at least we're paying for their time like pretty decently. Uh, Doomsday again, like uh, coming out of group stage, like you guys did get some of that prize money, getting fifteen hundred dollars. But like, how awesome is that? That like every single team is getting paid. That makes it to groups. I love it. I mean, just it's like the extra salary now. I think it's a sign that things are getting a bit real. Like things are like you know, it's a possibility that we can actually make this full-time jobs now because we can start to get paid it's an indication of the future so mm-hmm. i think it's pretty cool because i don't know maybe it's like um yeah i just there's more people getting paid <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and obviously no when that first format was announced it was with no precedent so they didn't know yeah. if there would be ten thousand viewers watching the final they didn't know, like they had no idea how it was going to turn out so the good news is if you're a rocket league fan or a competitor uh, after we have one season under our belt, it's gotten this much bigger. So that feels good. Feels good, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, plus now, so with the one open qualifier, as soon as these teams make groups, like sponsors and orgs will know for the next two Three months, months. Like, yeah, yeah they'll have like, screen time. Like depending on how far they make it, they will have screen time and they could sponsor some of these teams coming in. Uh, with league play as well, uh, since it's over four weekends, we actually see every single game on stream, which will be a lot of fun because we'll be able to see. Like sometimes games might be a little bit stoppy, but again, it's only best of fives now instead of series of five. So every game matters that much more because you'll only have seven games really now in that uh, league play. So you really want to win these best of fives. We'll probably get a lot of exciting uh, finishes down to the wire. Um, and of course, top two seeds from league play, without playoffs, they make the LAN right there. So group stage. Oh, that's league play so important. Is very important now. Yes. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then three through six, they will play in a double um, elimination tournament to see which two of those teams make it out into the next round of playoffs plus the LAN. And then, of course, the final weekend, which is like the online finals weekend, we will determine seeds plus a lot more money. And uh, and just seed the teams for the land in that environment, which will be a lot better. Instead of going off points, where it gets really confusing, it'll be a pretty simple process. Of course, the two playoff systems are a little confusing at first, but once people see it, it won't be that bad. Um, but again, Doobsy, since you're going to be participating in this, how do you feel overall of the entire scope of ROCS for Season 2 compared to Season 1? Uh, I love... The changes, I mean, personally, I would have implemented more changes just to get it, like, I don't know, more kind of what I was discussing in the previous episode. But I think it, just the fact the Q1 
Q2 split has gone and it's just one qualifier is what I love the most because yeah, points don't matter. Like points didn't matter as much in the previous one. It was like you know, so many teams like Flipside or the um, Northern Game were kind of like, oh yeah, you know, they get so far in groups and they're kind of like, well, we don't really have to do anything now. To be honest, we can kind of just mess around and everything seems a bit less intense. Yeah, yeah. And, and the fact much... that people were playing for literally nothing at some points was kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. Yeah, like those third place games were pretty rough. Now also the top six teams that make it to playoffs, besides that thirty five hundred dollars they get, they also get more money placed on their seasons of one through six mm. so lots of money to, uh, to go around and i think like the money is probably the most confusing part because it's split up in all these different sections but again most of viewers don't really need to know about the money too much like we'll explain it but it won't be that big of a deal compared to the players will really like appreciate that their time is valued and they're getting paid for different parts of the tournament um instead of only like two teams getting paid uh, in the online final on both splits. And then, like, of course, all eight get paid uh, going to the land. But it wasn't a lot of money for last place. It was, like, $1,100. So now I think that's bumped up to, like, three grand or something like that. I think like, it's I even more than that. For the grand finals, uh, for, let me like, see. I've got the place. price. I've got rule. yeah. rules up right here. So no for, for the world championship, seventh play or last place, you get five grand. Okay, five grand. Okay. So, yeah, so that's much better than what it was. And I'm glad that the prize pool is being split up like amongst all these like 16 teams instead of it really just being near the top. Like I think it's good that we have it all split up. Of course, like the first one was only 75 grand, so they can only split it up so far. But now that we have more money in there, I'm glad that they're trying to uh, to pay everyone. Not equally, of course. Like you still want to get paid like if you do well, but like everyone's getting paid a decent amount. So that'll be good. Now, the other question is a lot of pros, or at least some pros on Twitter, were saying, uh, is a month long enough time for, for roster swaps? Like, some people think RLCS Season 2 came a little too quick. No way. And, and Doozy, <laughs> like, obviously, <laughs> yeah, like, for your team, like, you're one of the few teams that literally didn't change a thing. M maybe the only team in Europe that literally didn't change <clears throat> a thing from RLCS Season 1 to RLCS Season 2. Say you guys did make a change, like, do you think a month is long enough? I think the problem isn't the length of the gap between RLCSs. I think it's the length of RLCS itself. I th I personally would shorten RLCS more. So mm. the hype is built up to like a more single event. So you're building up a lot of hype and then it's like, boom, here comes the open for qualifiers, group stage, land event, rather than spreading RLCS over so long. Because hype, hype kind of like fiddles away a bit yeah. and it kind of spreads out so much. So then by the time... The next RCS comes along. You have to do it quite quickly because well, I mean, it's like if we, else. it's it's like four majors a year almost. It's a little less than that because the break, right, it, ends up being yeah. It's about be three, three, three majors, four. three yeah. a year. But the problem is, it's like three. It's yeah. spread. It's like there's a three month out of the entire year. There's th only three months in total where there's no RCS going on. I don't know. I just think it's like I was, it, I know, it, it does genuinely feel like RCS has just ended and this has started a bit too quickly. Mm -hmm. um but i think to solve that you could the gap between rcs's you can increase by just decreasing and how long rcs goes on for i think i don't know that's my yeah thought. like one thing i like though is because there's a quicker time to rcs's like of course they want to like expand their time out or like use this money to stretch it along that three month process which you know is understandable for them but at least say like you don't make rcs like, you don't have three months and then another three months of, like, there is no RLCS and then you're back. So, at least, like, those teams that don't make it, like, or say, like, uh, you guys, like, you guys, like, uh, just missed out on the LAN and now there's going to be, like, another one uh, this year. So, you have, like, another crack at it, kind of, which I think is good for some teams. Like, I could see trying to do roster swaps in between might be a little bit of a rush, but I think, like, a month is a um, decent yeah. amount of time it, for roster a swaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the only problem is, like, most pros knew that RLCS Season 2 was coming up really quickly because we made sure to tell, like, most of the teams that were at the land, like, yeah, it's coming up pretty quickly, so be ready. But, like, I can understand if teams, like, just found out at the, like, say, last week that RLCS Season 2 is, like, really, really soon, that it might be a little bit tough. But I still think a month is a decent amount of time. Like, they just have to be on top of it to do those roster swaps and figure out what teams work. And at this point, like with the amount of money that's coming in, these players should be on top of that stuff and have to start thinking of like, maybe it's not a full-time job, but it's getting close. Like if you can be one of these group stage teams yeah. or league play teams, then you should be uh, 
be able to get sponsorships and start getting to more of a full-time Rocket League career at this point, which yeah. for teams that are making that money, they want it as quick as possible. Like I would assume like one month downtime is one month without any money at all. Besides like Rocket Royale, that's $300 a week, which is, I mean, like nothing. So to get these players paid and continually get paid, it's a good idea to have more events. Plus orgs love more events because it's more screen time, obviously. Like Twitch.tv's uh, uh, like Rocket League is doing amazing when RLCS is on. So, But again, we'll see if there's a viewer fatigue. There might be during the group stage because it's four weeks in a row mm -hmm. or five weeks in a row. Mid-season classic should break that up a bit. But we'll see if there's any fatigue there. My worry is like the last week of league play... There's going to be some matches that might not matter, so that could be a little rough, but the that's going to happen is, is that in they're any best season. of fives so. now, right? Instead of yeah, series exactly. of so fives. Yeah, exactly. So it'll be a little quicker, too. Yeah, I think that'll be a lot better, preventing yeah. us from like the five O's that were yeah. just complete smashings, because those, those ones were the hardest ones to watch. Yeah. Mm. And even though like, every game did matter then, it was still like, well... Like, flip side's up 4-0. They probably don't really need this game. Like, sometimes, like, it did matter. Like, Cosmic, they lost to Selfless to lose 4-1, and, and they were out and of the playoffs. And that was, yep. Yeah, so that was huge. But, um, you know, I think Best of Fives will help that. And some games, yeah, uh, they might not matter, but it is league play, and that's just the way it is. It's, it's the same in football, same in basketball. And, uh, like, the, uh, there's fans of those teams that, that still want to see those guys play. So, And with top six making playoffs, and, and like, the seeding should help a lot there with the top two race and the bottom two race trying to stay out of those two areas. So that should help a bit. All I mean, right. That's what I'm trying to think of, like, in terms of viewership, how to maximize it. Yeah. So I don't know which way, like, I don't know if, like, is having a longer event mean, means more people watch it as it goes up, or does it mean a shorter event means that people it like peaks up if you squish it? I don't mean. No. Yeah, yeah. But. Like, but then at the same time, like if it's shorter, then it's less of a long hype trail where like do enough people get interested throughout the season because they mm -hmm. don't even realize it happened if it's a month long. Like, oh crap, that happened already. And of course, like travel time and stuff like that for teams, like you need that three week to a month break to just organize all that at the end. For the land, um, yeah. so that's tough too, and you know, like I can see both ways working, or even like a circuit with multiple tournaments. Like I could see that working too, but uh, I do like a league place uh, system. Most things are just one-off tournaments anyway, so I kind of like that each game like matters, and teams have to like practice for these mm -hmm. teams because you'll have one or two opponents like each week, so you can scrim other teams th th throughout the entire week. More of like a normal-ish uh, schedule, which will help, I think. Uh, improve the play of everyone, hopefully. Uh, we'll see. All right. On that, we will move over to roster moves. So speaking of RLCS Season 2, a lot of people are making roster moves uh, because, you know, they want to be Cosmic. They want to win RLCS Season 2, or they just want to go to the land, so, like some of these teams. That's their main goal. And uh, so we'll start with Europe. We'll talk all about Europe. That's where most of the moves are happening right now. NA's been a little quiet. And some teams are just kind of staying together, so it's not a big deal. But um, we'll start with the Flying Dutchman about a week and a half ago. Vogan hung up his shirt in his closet, uh, closet and called it done with uh, Flying Dutchman. Um, it, it, like, it was heartbreaking, man. Like, just seeing him hang yeah, up that sad. shirt. And it's, oh, man. It was heartbreaking. That book, you know, is just going to have that one entry, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> all, it's all going to be there. Man, Went that waste land, of paper. Disbanded. Yeah, that waste of paper, because that was like a 300-page book. <laughs> I know, right? It was a Jeez. massive book. And I know. Just couldn't right? fill it. Yeah. I hope they're happy. Maybe um, you should sorry. just rename <laughs> Supersonic Avengers to the Flying Dutchman. Uh, yeah, you can really take confuse and everyone and it. then start putting your own achievements in there. Pretend that you made it to land. Uh, maybe. 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 That'd be but, really funny. Uh, like if but yeah, so that stuff. that's going to be interesting though because you know Vogan, you know a lot of people underestimate him. I feel um, like they they don't think he's the most mechanically talented player. They, I mean, uh, well, James, did you see that miss in RLCS land? Come on. No. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm just, but I'm talking <laughs> about... Oh, shit. Oh, shit, no. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about results, though. Uh, and, I mean, in, 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 even in this latest Rocket Royale, which we'll talk about later, but, like, Vogan, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this team make, make a run and make it again for EU. I think there's a lot of spots open at the bottom of EU for that fourth spot that could make it. It's hard to tell who's going to make it right now. I'm going to not 
uh, disagree, but I do think Vogan mechanically is not the same as some of the top tier players, but I still think he's a very smart player and plays pretty well uh, where he can make it again. But I just think, yeah, again, his mechanics aren't as good. And he knows that. Like, he knew, like, the Flying Dutchman, they played a completely different game than than everyone else, basically, like, at the land. They played really slow and methodical, and it worked. But I think as the scene continues to develop and gets better and better, it's going to be harder to pull that off because you saw against Cosmic and against, uh, I think it was, like, Flipside, they just got destroyed. Like, it wasn't even close. I even called the Brazil, then they ruined it. Yeah, it was, but, eight to, uh, it was like, 8-1. to one. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, eight two, I think, by the end. Eight two. Uh, yeah, but that team should be interesting with Sniper and Mystic. Uh, Doomsy, have you, uh, uh, you guys have gotten to play them? How do you think uh, they feel right now as a team? Well, when we played them, they were like, I'll be honest, they didn't look great. Um, even <laughs> even though they beat us, <laughs> but like, but we that's Europe for really, you. We were really not great. We were terrible anyway. They didn't play great, but then this is the Rock Royale where they got to the finals, by the way. Um, but when, when I was watching them later on, they were definitely a lot better than at the start when they played us. I think they just took a while to warm up and get into it. Mm-hmm. But saying that, I don't... I mean, I think that the decision for the Flying Dutchman to span, uh, I think from Vogan's point of view, is was the best decision because he, uh, he is their best player. Um, I think Astrum is a better team than the Flying Dutchman in regards much to worse Mystic. Name. It's it's weird. I think like I'm still unsure about Sniper. Mm-hmm. I don't rate him too highly. Uh, but I think Vogan and Mystic uh, yeah. like make Mystic up for the fact, make up for that. So good. I thought he was. Yeah, like, James has really a hard on for Mystic. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying you have a hard on for Mystic, dude. I, I just I just think he's a really skilled player. Yeah. Uh, like some of the plays that he were was making in Qualifier One was just it was very impressive. Like he's really really good. So. Now, I don't necessarily agree that Vogan was their best player. I think it was closer by the end than when they first uh, began as a team. I think Jesse yeah, and Gogu yeah. really stepped up towards the end. And I think they can still have some success on other European teams, like battling for that four spot, it seems like. Uh, so I wouldn't count those two out just yet. Uh, but this team is new, so it's hard to tell how they're going to play. But uh, a Mystic, he comes from Mocket, obviously. And Sniper comes from Kapow, so... So these guys know what they're doing when it comes to top-level play. Uh, it should be a pretty strong team. Again, I think battling for that four spot. I think top two is kind of set. Third with Super Slam Avengers, I have no fucking clue what the hell they're doing. Uh, but <laughs> top two is set. Oh, wait, top two is set. So basically, the, the Turbo's <laughs> team is it's old Kapow minus Sniper Kid. Yes, and now with Dogu. Which brings some more like defensive flavor to that team, which might help. I'm not sure if Sniper's better in defense or Dogu, because like Sniper used to play more defensive. He seems to be playing a little bit more offensive lately. But um, Dogu is usually that that brick wall in the back, and I think a lot might need that because sometimes his positional play isn't the greatest. I think like a lot of people think he's pretty good mechanically, but his uh, positional play is not fantastic, and maybe Dogu can help solve that by being that back wall. Um, and Turbo, obviously, is a solid player. He uh, joined Mocket like, after Kapow, and everyone considered Turbo probably th- the best player on Kapow at the time. So he oh, yeah. showed up on Mocket. They played pretty well, but they didn't get any better. Like They couldn't get into Northern Gaming or Flipside territory, but he still played really, really well for them. So that should be an interesting team. And then Turbo, he wants name suggestions for his RLCS team. And I think Corey said it the best. He said a lot of turbo dogs. I think that would work perfectly fine. And that would be pretty good. Then a lot of people are saying, that, oh, my dog, because I think that's the Twitch emote. But I don't know how these kids use I Twitch would anymore, say, so I don't know. I would say Panic Basket. Because that would be a good one. That's, yeah. a fun, that's a fun emote, too. Like, Kapow was so famous for having that the perfect Twitch emote, and, you know, be their team. So I'd like to see them have another Twitch emote-based team name. Well, that's why I think a lot of people are saying, uh, oh, my dog, because that's a Twitch emote, too. The dog. But that's too, it's too favored towards Dogu. Well, it's you also know, it's, t- uh, Tururu, though. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, but then like, a lot it, just gets left high that, and dry. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. That's true. Just, just put, like, random words get like that. And then, like, nipple basket. But, yeah. Or should you get nipple basket? And they're like, okay. That's but great. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> but what if you put a lot of Dogus or dogs uh, emotes? Then it kind of works, right? 
You maybe a lot of oh my dogs. You guys are thinking there's a wrong. lot of them. You guys are on the wrong track. You need to make All a team right. name that's so good they're making the moat specifically for it. I don't. That's right. how you know. You've that made is. It. I, that I is don't think it's gonna <laughs> happen. I think Golden Boy's in here right now, and he, I I don't think he has that power. Maybe uh, he it's does. Just, it, it's just that name. It just clicks, and you're like, you know what? This has to be in the moat. It's just the best name maybe. all the time. I could see it. Okay, <laughs> but they would. But the problem is, they would actually have to be good at the game in order to get it. Ooh, savage. But, yeah. Now I'm just joking. <laughs> like uh, there would be another problem. team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like, they're going to be, like, another team battling, I think, in that area. Like, I think they make league play, but honestly, with the open qualifiers in Europe, I literally have no idea who's going to make it. There's a lot of talented teams out there that can just take a series up randomly against these teams. So, I expect to see them in league play, but we'll see. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Who, I, don't who know. Knows? I, I think I think I quite like this. EU is, like, it used to be, like, top, you know, five or whatever, and then it kind of, there's a big tr drop, and then it was just, like, random everyone everywhere. Now it's like the top eight are solid, and it's like really difficult, I think, to even break into that now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty close, pretty intense now. And I think I think this, I think the skill levels of EU has gone up in terms of like yeah. top ten levels. You know who has the best skill? The or you know who has the the uh, the best region uh, in the world though is is North America because they won the RLCS so. North America's right. the best. Well, I mean, yeah, and she keeps saying that, man. You keep saying that. I mean, we'll, we'll, we, wait, we, we'll, we, wait, we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait till season two, shall we? Season yeah, that. I mean, <laughs> we've, that means we've still got uh, three more months of bragging. Yeah, but <laughs> you guys won on. You guys won at home. You guys won on the home ground. Home field Stewie advantage. America. Is that what you're trying yeah. to say? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's what I'm saying. All right. We'll say. see. We'll see where the next one's located. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? We're probably gonna just keep it in North America all the time, just so we can keep winning them. Yeah, the next one's gonna go on at Gibbs' house. house. Let's just oh, yeah, let's just go sure. to Australia. Just like even the oh field. my god, no Ocean one. Attic would be so pissed no, that's if not. they're like, we can't even participate <laughs> in this, but we can watch it. <laughs> oh my god. They would kill us. Like they would burn down the building, I think. Yeah. <laughs> they're crazy Fine. down there. Would not end well. Yeah, but to continue with Europe, we also had Pashi joining Northern Game, and for a while there, he was thinking about forming his own team, probably with some of these players that we've talked about, but in the end, Northern Game loses Greasy to Flipside to take Mike's spot, so then Northern Game is looking for a player, and they pick up Pashi. I would say that's fine. Like, Pashi's a really uh, good player, so he's just going to have to meld uh, with the team, and, and that will probably take a little bit of time, but they did win uh, Rocket Royale. And I didn't see many uh, other moves f uh, for Northern Gaming since Super Sonic Avengers, I heard a lot of people were asking them to try out for Flipside or Apache was trying to join them, supposedly, and all stuff. And Super Sonic Avengers like, nah, dude, our team is solid. We're good. Except for Kasabi. Nah. We're getting rid of him. No. <laughs> but. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> Ah, funny joke. <laughs> you guys are so mean, kids. I kid. It wasn't Kasabi's fault, I don't think, but. No, you you can't say that now. It's like it was his fault, but you know it wasn't. I didn't it say was. it was his fault. No, I, 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 I'm still wasn't. of the opinion if I had played that day, I, we would have lost still. Just a throw good enough. I still good. That's, that's, that's perfectly fine. Opinion. That's why I'm saying <laughs> it's not necessarily his fault. It, you know, bad uh, bounces go different ways, but of course hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, but yeah, so Super Sonic Avengers, like as uh, the three of you, we were hearing maybe flipside tryouts, maybe Pashi joining. Like, why'd you guys decide to? St to like be a team and stay together the only europe team basically left in the first because all time. right this this is where it's just like i'm getting annoyed well not annoyed but it's like i'm questioning why people keep switching teams so often yeah uh, we are sticking together because we play well we've won like we've won two rocket royals and we've won like 12 well not 12 we've won like a bunch of gfinities we've won we've won like every tournament and we put up a lot of good results we have a very good history uh and we've consistently been like the top four of the power rankings for ages and we and we keep getting better in terms of our just teamwork and positional awareness and just how well we mold together. So we're like, well, let's just keep playing like this, keep improving as a team and focus on our teamwork and our camaraderie and do work like that rather than every like three months or whatever. You go, oh, well, you know, we didn't get first. We got second. So I think we're going <laughs> to we're second. We're the second best team in the world. Let's Screw just that. mess up. Yeah. I'll join the first team, and then like everyone, I think everything will be magically better and stuff. And just like if you join a new team, you then have to spend another like couple of months getting used to that teamwork, and then like kind of changing your play style a bit, and you're just wasting time. Whereas that two months could have just been spent sticking to your old team and working at it. I mean, I get like 
you got to try out. But I think it's like there's so many team swaps now. It's like surely there's one team you found where you're like, you know what, this is pretty good. I think we can work with this. It, you're not going to join a team and be like, oh, this is absolutely perfect. We're going to win right away. You know, it's just like you got to work a bit to get there. So that's why we're sitting together because it's just like there's no, we're the best team that we can like form with the three of us. Like, if we go, I, if any of us go to another team, I think it will be a bit. It will just take ages to adapt and just be silly and yeah. Also. We want to redeem ourselves. There's no way we're not we're not going to <laughs> yeah, to that. And then just go. You know what? If we're you just don't make up. league play, I am going to slap you. <laughs> yeah, I will. we will slap you. No, don't slap me. Yeah, you might have to switch to COD if you if you lose. Switch to oh. COD, Jesus. Well, the one thing that I think that works for you guys, like all three of you are pretty laid back or just having fun at the same time. I don't know if that's necessarily true for a lot of the other European players. A lot of them are. A little bit more serious in their personality so maybe like they weren't as good of friends together possibly not all the time i would say but i think like you guys have a good uh friendship and camaraderie compared to some of even the better teams then so that's why i think you guys are sticking together too because because obviously like if you're not having fun while losing which obviously no one has actual fun while losing but at least it's (laughs) You know, it's okay. It's not like the end of the world where you start like screaming at each other. Um, then you guys should be okay. Uh, so yeah, Snasky was really that. though. Snasky was really harsh to me when when I. So we we played him in a mocket tournament. It's like him and and like Kadop and I forget who their third was, but uh, after I we beat him in the in in the winners final to go to the finals, and then they beat us two series in a row, and he was just being. You know, an extreme salt lord, <laughs> and he was like, "You're so I'll bad." You're a I think it's all in your head, James. I think it's all in your maybe head. Was, maybe that's just the way. <laughs> I remember to be fair, it. like Snasky doesn't like me. He hates me. Snasky he's hates told you. Me. He he's told me. And then we played some solo <laughs> standard together, and we started losing like every single game. Mostly my fault, but you know, hey, it happens. Whatever. Was it seven uh, M? What was I gonna say? Oh, uh, like speaking of Kdop, like that's like one of the big players. I think that hasn't found a team yet to my knowledge he's kind of flirting with other teams and like like i know doomsy you're really high on kdop and uh like, are you surprised he doesn't have a team yet or are you just waiting to see what they do with him or i think i think everyone's asking him i think because who yeah. wouldn't be asking kdop to be on a team but i think he's just like i don't know sticking to whatever i don't know whatever because yeah, i mean he's got two weeks now at this point well, that, the signups are saying open, that so. i think he just like i don't know it was like doping for like two weeks or something because <laughs> he was so good and i think yeah. i think i think he slipped a bit now i think he just like used up all his energy for like a fortnight because I, I, was, I was playing with him lately so like, you're not like you know you're a nine out of ten now Kate up you're not a ten out of ten what are you doing son <laughs> like could have been an off i don't know, I don't know where he'll be it could have been off night. Yeah. i don't know yeah. where, where he'll but be. like he's like another player that, that i want to track when he gets on a team like that team's going to be a threat for league play most likely um We'll see. Fuck. Europe's going to be a little crazy. See what else did we miss? Anything from Europe? I don't think so. I think we're going on to North America roster moves. We'll uh, put a new timestamp for this one since these are going long. Um, yeah. Holy so holy. there's only been a few moves. Like the big three, uh, Exodus, Kings of Urban, and Cosmic, they're all the same teams uh, compared which to is, Europe's side. You know, which is a surprise because, I mean, I, I know like I had heard several rumors about like cosmic potential roster moves just because of the whole gambit situation but yeah i guess just because you know obviously because of their lane performance why change it yeah like if they would have came in seventh i bet we would have saw some crazy shit happening um but (laughs) um and that's where i'll leave it but uh they won obviously so it's like hey why break up a good thing let's keep this going and it, it well, it's just weird because, like, the big three in Europe, you know, Mocket and A, a flip side, and Northern Game, and all three of them changed. Like, Mocket uh, Europe, I'm, I'm sorry, like, Mocket Europe is gone. And now, of course, like, they kind of swap players with flip side and Northern Game, and kind of with a Mocket and A player, I mean, a Europe player in there. Uh, but then the big three on NA, still the same. Then Genesis, though, Quinn has left. He is leaving competitive play. He's too old for this shit. That's what I heard. Heard straight from his mouth. Feels bad. No, Poor I know Quinn. where he's coming from. Poor Quinn. Makes sense. Me and James are also old. Yeah, we're all we're washed like, up. Yeah, so. <laughs> it was a good run, Quinn. We love you. Hopefully we'll see oh. you soon. Doing other stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, Quinn is gone. Genesis is looking for a third. Rumors are 
possibly Zane Jackie. There's some other rumors going on, but who yeah. knows? Honestly, though, I I don't. Or I think Lucky Bounce is the is the better free agency spot. If you're if you're a free agent and you're looking to join a team, and you're either going to join Torment and Darkfire or Espeon and Pluto, mm -hmm. like Lucky Bounce has been looking really good recently. So, uh, but those those yeah. are definitely the two best free agent spots. The one thing I would worry about with uh, Lucky Bounce is the whole dark fire he left for two weeks, and it's like, oh, now I come back to Lucky Everybody Bounce. Everybody like that, that, that that's true. But like, he was like, you know what? I'm gonna leave, and then Torment kind of left, and and Timothy's like, guys, what the fuck? And then they come back, Timothy, and then Timothy's like, yay, and now they're like, no, sorry, Timothy, you're out. And it's like, what the fuck? What the hell happened? Uh, like Lucky Bounce is weird. Like I think. They uh, definitely uh, overperformed during the group stage of Qualifier 2. I don't think they're that good, necessarily. But at the same time, I, I don't think Genesis is that good either. So that's a tough one. Like, do you, like who would you rather play with, Pluto and Espeon or, or Darkfire and Torment? I would probably all, like also go Darkfire and Torment, but it could also be how you fit uh, with the squad. Because if Pluto is going to play defense, then you might be more uh, open to roaming around on Genesis. Um, and Lucky Bounce, they, like, Torment kind of plays defense, but not really. They're more of, like, a full rotational team. Uh, so it could just be how you f fit into the team. And um, Zane has played for both uh, recently, played for Lucky Bounce mm -hmm. and Genesis. So I assume he's going to go to one of these teams uh, from Makadene, which is done, and that's why I kept saying Makadene because it's right in the outline, right in front of my face. Uh, they are done because uh, Rizzo left. As we know it, who knows if they'll pick up another team? But yeah, suppose Rizzo's yeah, gone. yeah. Like Rizzo's gone. Like Low Five doesn't want to compete anymore either, um, to my knowledge. And uh, and the like, insolences, I believe, is kind of gone, but he hasn't like officially said that. I assume he's uh, uh, looking for a team as well, so he could be going yeah. to either Genesis I mean, or Lucky Bounce. Well, I think like I don't. I'm just thinking like insolences is really good, and I know he hangs out with classics a lot. Um, That's true. Yeah. So I would not be like that's actually a really really talented team that not a lot of people are talking about. Uh, but, like was retrospect or classics team. He teamed with Geno Cop and Chrome, um, and they all like after the first week of the second qualifier, they were like in a spot to make a run for the land, and then everything just broke down. But like classics in those qualifiers played very very well, um, and so if Insul went there, that's. There would be that would be a pretty high powered team. That'd be a very very good team. But the question is is like attitude. Like classics is a yeah. younger player, and he comes from the world of Counter Strike saltiness, and <laughs> like it's in, it's just embedded in his soul. So <laughs> we'll have to see if he could overcome that. Uh, yeah. Plus, to, like to we the team. Yeah, well, uh, we've always said classics is kind of more of a solo star than a team star, and I believe like, insolence is pretty similar. He's really good at one v ones. He plays really good defense, but he's generally not, like, a team player as much as a solo player. We'll see. Like, we've seen teams that are just solo players come together and work, but it seems every single time Klazix tries to make one of those teams, it fails. So he kind of has that track record going for him right now. Um, we'll see. Like, uh, those players I'm definitely looking out for to come uh, through to league play, as well as, like, a Geno Cop. Chrome is kind of, like, in that mix. And a lot of these subs that went to the land, like Flo and Husky, like, I know th uh, they're looking for teams because they're like, well, now we want a piece of the pie. Like, sure, like, going to land was cool, but we didn't really do anything and we didn't get, you know, money for it or whatever. So um, I assume that these guys want to try and compete, f like, even uh, just for that $3,500 going to league play. Like, it opens up the door for a lot more teams. Like, a team like Selfless, like, last time, they figured, eh, we can make group play. They probably didn't think they would make the land. But they still tried for it anyway. But like a lot of teams that were in that boat were just like, well, I'll just sub for a team that is going to go to the land because then I at least I get a free trip out of it. Yeah, and like Flo and, and Husky. Yeah. I'm glad they did because I got to hang out with them. Yeah, and but now like you get $3,500 just by making the uh, league play. And now there's more of like a bracket style where you can do some upsets. and it's Because like top six make playoffs now, so you still have a chance there if you just get a couple upsets when it comes down to the wire. So maybe some more of these subs that are really good, try and form these teams to uh, play it out. But there's also players like Waffle we've seen around who's like... Oh, God. Kind of Waffle not. is so good. Yeah, like he's a great fill-in spot, but I think he's pulling back to more of like a coaching role with his team. I don't I think understand he why. A lot of school. Well, because I think he has school. 
hopefully we'll have enough money in the scene for him to be like, you know what, I'm going to do this. Because Waffle is, Waffle's hella good. Yeah. Like, he is still really, really good. Well, like, he filled in for uh, Exodus in one of the uh, Game Zone matches and just, like, fit in perfectly. It was fine. Like, everything went really well. So he's definitely a player to look out for. Like, I think he needs talent around him to make sure it works. But uh, there's plenty of talent in North America that could work there. Uh, but there's other players, too, and we'll see. Like, we don't even know, like, eight teams in North America right now, I feel like. <laughs> like, I feel like it'll, it's all like, in the air, and everyone's trying to find spots, but no one's really on a team yet besides the big three. So I'm just like, who the, who the hell knows? Um, but, uh, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, I answered that Twitter question from PDP. Thank you about Vogan's new team versus Dogu's new team. Who will do better in RLCS? Let's just get a like final answer for this. I am gonna give it to Dogu's team. What? I am gonna do mind. it. I'm gonna go. Uh, yeah, like, like I know they're probably the underdog, but and Dude. and pun intended. <laughs> um, but to Ruru and Dogu, the power of the dogs. I have two dogs. I understand. It's possible, like with those emotes, yeah, we'll power them on. I think they'll make league play, and then we'll see. It, like I think they'll both be in that three to six uh, playoff, and then we'll see. But you know, I'm going to give it to the power of the dogs, Dogu. I believe in you, and a lot. You're not a dog, but you're, you're close enough. To be fair, though, what our our, um, uh, our predictions for the land did not. Going very well. Yeah, so no, I, can't, I can't. I can't really start yelling at you for uh, predicting that, can I? Who knows? Like, I don't think it's that crazy. Like, I think it is a little, but I don't think it's that crazy. What? But what's that crazy? To say that Dogu's team is better than. Oh, Dogu's. okay. Got you. I was gonna say because the land was crazy. No, no, like, the, I, land, I, the was land was crazy. Absolutely, the land was crazy. crazy. <laughs> but power of the dog and the power of the emotes will prevail. James, who do you got? Vogan's team or Dogu's team? I'm going to have to go with Vogan. Like, I'm never going to doubt Vogan ever again for <laughs> anything. Very, very like, people confident. didn't think that he was going to make the land, and they finished fourth. So, like, yeah. I will just, if if there's two, if there's a decision, and I don't know for certain, I will just go with Vogan. That sounds like a good plan. And Doomsday, yeah. obviously, like, you're going with Vogan's team? Yeah, they're, they're better than those team. For now. For now, but, Doomsday. But, yeah, it it's like... Group plays what like league play even isn't like it was October wasn't it? So yeah, got, like the playoffs are not till uh, November, so there's still a lot of time mm -hmm. if those teams mm -hmm. both make league play to see who does better. So still plenty of time. We'll see if what the drive is. Like we know Vogan's drive. I just don't know necessarily all of them. Like Dogu probably has pretty good drive too, being on Vogan's team. But I don't, I'm not sure about the other guys. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, then really quick, uh, Game of Stone Champions League coming back again this Thursday. Last week, though, if you guys didn't watch the Kings of Urban versus Exodus series, with Kings of Urban having Remco as a sub and Exodus having Greasy Meister as a sub, go watch that series. I'll put a link yeah. in the description, but holy hell. I, I yell at the top series. of my lungs, so just to make sure the volume is down low, because I was, I was losing my mind. They, just huh? in the e did they bring in the EU power players then, did they? Yeah, which teams. normally I wouldn't allow, but since both teams did it, I was like, whatever, that's fine. Just go for it. But it was <laughs> incredibly entertaining. It went down to Game 5 overtime. I won't spoil the winner for you here, but uh, absolutely insane series. And it was just <laughs> – it was extremely fast series, which is what we want to see. Yeah. Probably the uh, Europeans helped a lot, but it's not like the North American players didn't play well uh, either. Uh, Garrett went off. So did uh, Jacob. So. Yeah, Cobb plays at a high high pace. Very yeah, high pace. So definitely worth a check. And then we move on Last pace. to Rocket Royale. We've missed two weeks, and Doomsy wanted to make sure that we talked about the first week. Because, you know, some team named Super Sonic Avengers actually won it. Mate, we well, won very nicely. You made, you, know. like you made Northern Gaming lose a player by beating them. We are, we are absolutely brutal. First, we beat Flipside, <laughs> made them kind of just like disband almost. And then we uh, then we beat Northern Gaming, make them disband. So uh, watch out for us. We did make the Flying Dutch. Actually, we tech, did we make the Flying Dutch disband? I don't know. <laughs> Not, well, no. Well, no, we didn't. But we beat them, and then and then you know, like two months later, they disbanded. So yeah, we did it too. Close, uh, Close enough. Just you Close know, enough. not another notch on the belt. <laughs> this um, is why Europe is so crazy yes. because Super Sonic Avengers. They just disband mm. everyone. I know. We, it was it was a massive contrast to the uh, last next to the uh, 
Rocket Royale afterwards. But yeah, mm-hmm. we won that one, so that's good. But that's Got like that su- a Super Sonic Avengers in like a nutshell. Like you guys can beat the top yeah, teams, man. and then you just like lose to like those borderline teams. I mean, like we could win RLCS, or we won't make groups. <laughs> <laughs> one it. or the other. That Super Sonic other. Avengers in a nutshell. What are we doing? Like, there's we'll no. That's well, we're weird. We're so inconsistent. Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, the next week we had uh, Super Sonic Avengers losing in group stage due to like tiebreakers ish, almost. They, if they um, would have beat Astrum, they would have made it in. You know? That's true. A L- 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 losing to Astrum made them um, not make it. Astrum and Kaunos came out of their group. And then Astrum made it all the way to the finals to face the new Northern Gaiman. Or mm. before <laughs> they were official, they were playing with Pashi. Northern Gaiman just kind of <laughs> kind, just kind of destroyed them. Like I was watching that series. Like Game 1, well, Astrum won, but it was on like two fluke goals. And I was like, this is going to... This is not going to go well for them, and then Northern Gaming just like tore them up. It was they just destroyed them. Uh, I think uh, Flipside was using my bipod and another sub possibly, so they lost to Astrum earlier. But it was still a pretty impressive win for Astrum. They beat Weedum Babies. I assume that's where Scrub Killer was, but I'm not sure. I have no idea who was on Weedum Babies. Um, but Astrum's like still showing up big here. But Northern Gaming uh, uh, with Pashi. Played extremely well. They almost lost to Cow Nose, I think. Oh no, I'm sorry, that was Team Solid. Uh, but Northern Gaming coming in pretty pretty easily, three O's and then a four one over Astrum in the playoff phase. Uh, did really really well, and then they announced Pashi is the new player for Northern Gaming. So must have been a tryout. They must have liked it. Looks like it worked out. They only lost two games total throughout the entire Rocket Royale. So pretty impressive mm-hmm. by the Yeah. Well played, Northern Game. Well played. Well played, well played. And then, of course, on the NA side, uh, so those Kings of Urban guys, they kind of suck on land, but looks like, man. They're onliners? Is that dude, what you're telling Yeah, me? they're onliners, man. They just destroy everyone <laughs> online. They do it again here. Take down Exodus in the finals, I think. Or the first one, yeah. It was Exodus <clears> four <throat> games to one. It wasn't even close. Cosmic did not play in this Rocket Royale. Um, but. <laughs> They just mopped the floor. Uh, what do you mean they didn't play in this Rocket Royale? They in did. the first one they did, week one. Oh, in the not, first one. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Um, but Exodus, again, making the finals, beating Momentum three games to one, which is really good. Uh, uh, Genesis just keeps faltering, losing in the quarterfinals. Two Momentum, three to zero. Momentum is one of those teams, like in NA, probably besides the big three, like if they stay together, is looking really good for league play. Uh, they could be that uh, dark horse to uh, grab like a higher spot than even number four, but number four for sure would be pretty easy. But I've been hearing rumors that they might not be able to play all, like all three of them, but we'll see. Hopefully they can get that worked out. Um, and then of course, Rock Royale number two, Kings of Urban again, destroying, destroying Exodus again in the finals four to zero, but Exodus took down cosmic three games to one and Genesis again, uh, uh, losing in the corners 3-0 to while they're still trying to find their third. It's tough for Genesis right now. It's good for Exodus, kind of? Like, are you happy right now? Like, if you're uh, on Exodus, that you beat Cosmic, but you're getting destroyed by Kings of Urban? Eh. Yeah. I, they, they, I, they, they did get destroyed uh, four games to nothing. It, Exodus had, like, no offense. And also, one other thing, too, that I want to say. It's like, that was, like, the debut of Golden Boy casting on Rocket League Central. That was I heard unbelievable. It was he was so garbage. He was talking about washing hands. I told you is lying because yeah. I went back and watched it and I cried at how beautiful it was. Oh, it was yeah. 100% beautiful. Like the ending of uh Charging well, I learned Redemption a lot. almost. Yeah, like I learned a lot about bathroom etiquette. So so like that was good at least <laughs> what? from that stream. It was good. But, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, Kings they they beat Exodus. I mean, I don't want to ruin uh, what you had said before, but Exodus has had decent results against Kings of Urban <laughs> recently. Uh, so I don't think they should be too upset about second place finish. Yeah, but I think they need to start taking some games, like uh, losing eight games to one. And if you don't count like the Gamerson matchup, because that was like with subs, so it's hard to count that. But eight games to one against Kings of Urban is a little. Is a little uh, like alarming, but at the same time, they're beating everyone else, so that's good. So they should be fine going into league play. 
But I would be worried. Like, lately, their shot actually has been a little bit off. Like, I know Garrett was a little sick this Sunday for Rock Royale. Like, I'm not, like, making um, excuses for him, but that might have hurt them a little bit. Uh, but Kings of Urban and Exodus are looking really good. Uh, Cosmic's not looking terrible uh, uh, either, but they're not beating uh, Exodus right now. But that was one series. Who, who the hell knows where they're going to be. Like, I still see that it's probably a big three right now between Cosmic, Exodus, and Kings of Urban. Momentum's trying to cheat up into that area. We'll see if they participate in the RLCS together. But uh, besides that, though, it's just a shit show. Besides, like, those four teams, like, it's, it's anyone's all game. mixing up. It's all yeah. getting mixed up. Just yeah, it's anyone's game. Like if you're in an A and you think you're good, make a team. You well, one team, one team that I think is going to surprise a lot of people, uh, making league play and competing in league play is actually a PlayStation Four team known as Momentum. I think those guys are going to do really, really well. Yeah. Uh, so like, that's going to be exciting. Like count them out of it. Like, I was saying, like those four are really good, like with Momentum. But after that, like, I don't know. But Momentum is looking really good. I just really hope they do play together. I heard rumors that someone couldn't play for the RLCS, uh, but we'll see. Um, yeah, those four teams, though, look set. But five through eight, who the hell knows? Uh, like Genesis, to be fair, has looked like shit uh, <laughs> lately. Like, there's no there's no other way about it. They've looked like crap. Uh, like Lucky Bounce, I think, could pull it out if they get a good third. We'll see. But again, we don't know because we don't know who their third is. Um, after that, like Goomba Squad's actually had some pretty good results. It was now XD, I think. Uh, they might have a chance, but I don't know. I'm just glad, James, that for the Open Qualifier, you will be there and I won't, so I won't have to do any of these predictions. And Because uh, I don't be know what's going Busy being happen. a papa? Busy being a papa. but uh, changing diapers? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll have... Th- th- uh, the baby uh, predict every single game, and he'll probably do better than any of us will for the yeah, open qualifiers. Just get like two yeah. pieces of paper, and be like, yeah. Have, have him crawl on one of them. Which one? Yeah, yeah, or have him like point at one or something, because by that point he's not. Or have two bowls of Cheerios, so. the first one he eats out of. I don't think they eat Cheerios <laughs> when they're that young. Pretty Babies? sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> well, yeah, like, I put like two bottles of formula. Dinner. Yeah, like yeah, I put two bottles of formula and see which one he he reaches for. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll do that. Maybe gushers would probably work. I don't. You know, I, no, I don't. I don't think the. Sugar Jimsy, do you even know gushers, what a gusher is? <laughs> no. You That's don't know what a gusher is. You, oh, a man. Gush- I, you live a deprived life. <laughs> you don't know. I know what gushing is. <laughs> no, no. We're talking what's about a, gushers. You really yeah, have. We'll, we'll. I'll bring some. Uh, next time I see you, I'll bring some. There you go. Is it a, is it a licorice based sweet? Yes. Yeah, well, what is it? yeah kind of. Oh, well, I guess. They just it is a licorice based that. treat, I think, and it's filled with a gushy material. Yeah, it's like a yeah. gummy, oh, but it's filled with like not a cream. Actually, like I know. A it's like almost. a. It's like yeah. It's like a like a uh, well, semi like a really viscous. condensed juice. Yeah, yeah, it's juicy. It's delicious. Oh, uh, one I was thinking <laughs> of was like a marshmallow interior. No. No, 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 no. Not at all. No. No. I'm chuffed though. I guess that. We'll have to bring them to you if we see you at the next line. Gushers are like the the premium lunch snack. <laughs> I'll bring you some. Premium. You know what? You could bring that. I would agree. I, w- I would agree. That's <laughs> probably the premium like candy like lunch snack that you can yeah. get. Because usually it's just like fruit snacks, but then yeah. you get gushers. Some oh, people man. have those crappy, you know, like little uh, bears. That are like somewhat see-through and colored, and get packs of those. And then the really, the really, really uh, fortunate people get gushers. I don't know. Gummy bears are pretty good. Gummy bears are okay. Pretty good. And then like I, those I, sour worms are really good too. Uh, yeah. I'm just not a massive fan of like sweet uh, sweets like that. I have yeah. chocolate, chocolate, or biscuit-based snacks, or give me like a chocolate fudge cake or something. Oh yeah. Oh anything, yeah. Any, anything. Well, with like, but but you can't put that in a lunchbox. When you're like, no, but you can put you can eight. put a nice biscuit in there. Could put a nice biscuit in there. You put a packet of chocolate balls. Yeah, we just we just randomly got off on an advertising tangent. Nah, I, I hope we get what. paid a lot by gushers. Whoever whoever yeah. whoever makes gushers. And the next line, you bring the gushers. I'll bring the chocolate bourbons and custard creams, and we're sorted. Okay. Sweet. All right. We'll, just, we'll Sweet. gather around. We'll, oh, yeah. Tasty. Tasty. And then we'll food. all eat all of that at a Taco Bell, and we'll be set. Del Taco. Just bring some fire sauce. We're set. I'll bring the hot sauce. No, fire sauce. 
All right, anyway, <laughs> we'll continue. <laughs> We're Next topic, <laughs> LAN versus online. So, like, this is a big topic that, like, uh, Golden Boys brought up a lot uh, with us, as well as, like, the community um, in general. Like, Vogan has, has publicly said, like, we don't really care that much about the online tournaments, and this was when he was with Flying Dutchman. We just care, like, to make the LAN and then perform at the LAN. So, like, when the first few Rocket Royals come back from the LAN, his team didn't do that well. He's like, well, like, we're not trying as hard, obviously, because, like, which I understand because, like, you can have some time off and, like, teams can be like, yeah, let's just try for it, but we haven't been practicing this week. But my question uh, to you guys, is there such a thing as LAN versus online after only one LAN in Rocket League? Um, I'll just go first. Uh, I have experience in this arena with Halo. I've t- talked about it a trillion times. But, they like, it is a different game. And I didn't get to play a lot of the LAN build uh, there because players were practicing and there was a limited amount of computers Gosh, so I didn't get to man. play a lot of the land build but from Halo yes like there were mm-hmm. always the online warriors who were gods online but you come to a land where your shots it is it is a different game your shots behave differently and mm-hmm. they just wouldn't do as well so um I do think there is a difference between land and online and we are already seeing it like with cosmic they, they, no one, <laughs> like, they performed very well on land, and even just recently, get, they just got beat by Exodus online. And whether that has to do with, like, over zero being West Coast, not getting good ping on East, I don't know. But I, I think there is validity to the claim. Doozy? Uh, I think the basis of the claim has a point. I mean, yes, it's definitely a different game. Um, but after one land, and you can't do anything, like, we get like I don't know one land. It's like if you're doing a power rankings, for example, after one land, it's basically it's just going to be the result of whatever it was at the land. I don't know. I just think it's there's too much space between. There's not enough like lands in the moment to even bother thinking about it like that. How many lands is it going to take, Doomsy? It's going to take seven thousand lands. <laughs> <laughs> he All lost the lands head, so. in the I'm world. <laughs> I don't know. Just it needs more consistent lands going on, and then you build up a bit more of a resume. For a team to do stuff, but I don't know. But yeah, I think like um, I mean, Bogan was saying that about the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> the Flying Dutchman have absolutely zero achievements whatsoever in terms of onlines, but they just did well with the LAN. So mm-hmm. it's like, well, yeah, no, of course you want to, um, uh, you want to credit lands a lot more. But I think yeah. it's, it's way too early. It's way too early to credit lands. Yeah, but the, ar- uh, the argument f- uh, for Vogan, like it helps him obviously to argue that point. Uh, like I just think there is a thing between performing at LAN versus performing online, but I literally don't know it at all because it's only been one LAN. Yeah. It could have just been like, say, Kings of Urban. They literally had one bad series versus the Flying Dutchman, and then they lost to Flipside. So it's like, and Flipside well, beat everybody course, else. Yeah, they're playing Flipside, so that's not a big deal. Like Flying Dutchman, they could have easily been seventh, but they beat Kings of Urban. Like they had one a really good series, which I'm not gonna like discredit, but it's one series. It's it was four games. And then they had pretty easy road outside of that because they played Genesis and beat them. Um, now, so I'm not gonna take away f- from his fourth, but I don't ne- necessarily agree that like Vogan's now a land player f- per se. Like it's only been one land. Let's not get crazy. I want to see these uh, players come back to land and perform again. And again, it's one tournament over two days. Plus, it was the first land for everyone. So I think players can improve on land. What would you and do if you one land? Like, right now, what, what well, would you like, do? Well, even with Cosmic. Like, I'm not uh, confident that they will do that again. Yeah. Like, at the next land. Like, I think they could, because Over Zero played out of his mind, but it's, like, in the same thing. Like, if they would have lost to uh, Flipside, three games to two um, instead, be a whole different story. Because they could have been bounced earlier maybe not like maybe they would have beat everyone anyway um it's just too hard to tell after one land like i do understand land versus online but for power rankings purposes which vogan was like well how do you power rank us in seventh or whatever it was and they finished fourth in the world it's like because it's only been one land like you can't base every single thing Mm -hmm. off of just one land and just call it a one thing for the power rankings is it's supposed to be like a conversation piece of like which teams do you think will win the following week pretty much? And it's like, it's fine to have different opinions of it, but you can't just be like, all right, Cosmic won land, so for the next three months, they're number one in North America. It doesn't matter like if they don't make a final 
of Rocket Royale for the next month, they're still number one. It's like, no, like, but you mm-hmm. can call them defending world champions because they are the defending world champions. None of these other tournaments really matter in the grand scheme of things besides RLCS for now. But I want to see more lands. It's, I want to see these players at more lands competing. Like Cook's here. He went off on the land, and he was nervous well, as a, fuck. Apparently, though, I had heard that uh, Cooksir used to compete in Tekken and oh, go yeah? to like tournaments to play Tekken. Uh, so it is, you know, yeah. We saw like if if that's true, I don't know really to the extent that he played in those tournaments. But Marky also had live event tournament experience with ping pong. But Kronovi was how, undoubtedly how is he so the good most... at everything. And why know. didn't I play I him in play ping pong him. while I was there? We didn't I'm have a table. Mad. Otherwise, but I think there was one on the been roof or something too. Just so All right, so that's, that's what we need for the next land, then. We need Priorities. a ping pong table. Get a ping pong table. <laughs> yes, I get many, down. Get many ping pong tables. Have a tournament. We're yeah. sorted. See, I'm not great at ping pong. Like, I've only played it like, with my family, but I'm, like, the best in my family, which doesn't mean I'm good at all. <laughs> like, I'm terrible. But I would love to play someone that's actually good at ping pong. It would be a lot well, of fun. Well, I, I used to practice all the time uh, at work. We had a legit ping pong table. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Golden well, my Boy sister was, was one on the roof. Feels bad. Yeah, it, uh, there was one on the roof, and I heard about it. But it, but like every time I tried to go to the roof, it was closed by that point. So, but like my best friend was better than me at ping pong. He was the only one I was so fucking mad. But he's like eight feet tall, so fuck that. You know, his we should have a doubles tall. tournament. <laughs> what? You don't need to be tall to play ping pong. It's like you can dude, his <laughs> arms would just reach across the entire table and just be like, yeah, it's easy. Yeah, doesn't matter. Could- the table's no. like, that, uh, what, why? Doomsie, <laughs> let me have this. Let me have these excuses. <laughs> no! Let me have it, damn it. <laughs> like, I beat um, him, like, once, so I'm happy. But uh, Going back to that, whatever we're talking about, uh, land beyond line, I reckon, I think the difference between, I mean, I've heard the land build is really good, but I reckon, surely it's just the same as playing offline, right? Uh, I mean, I don't know, I'm just assuming here. Yeah. But I, I think the biggest factor of where teams played differently at the land was just because of the mental game. I mean, because you're at a land environment in front of a crowd you know there's some pressure on you i think that affected some teams more than others i think with the flying dutchman's case they had nothing to lose to be honest if they went out and lost they, they were expected to like just lose all their games pretty much um so they were just like same with cosmic like a, in a way too they had a no fucks given attitude basically so they were yeah. just like well, well let's just play as well as we can see what we do. and yeah they did really well because i don't think they were pressured mentally to play well whereas some teams like kings of urban they were pressured to do really well, and they didn't really deal with the pressure as much, I don't think. So they could Yeah, really same with, with Mock it. And it's like, how much do you put in of like, well, they had too much pressure, maybe that they can't handle the pressure, or maybe they just had one bad series. It's very possible. Like, Kings of Urban versus Flying Dutchman, that was like the first series either of these teams played like in front of a crowd. So, mm. like, I think it's hard to judge results off that, but, but like, obviously it is a result. I just want to see more of it. Like, one land is a very small sample size, so I can't really like tell you that like over zero is the best player in the world when they go to land like i can't say that um but i don't think he, he was the best player there to begin with i think cooks here really really shined but they mm-hmm. lost so we're gonna give mvp obviously over to the other team but um we'll see like, yeah. i just want to see more events and hopefully like a land build comes into rocket yes. so other orgs can just make land i just and we'll see i just want to yeah, have yeah, like i want to have a land build to play with my friends yeah because we would do that in Halo all the time. It's just have a land, have a Halo land, and it's yeah. uh, way more fun to play in that land environment where you have that no latency. Yeah, I just want that for myself to play with my friends. I've got all this blue space over here Ooh. to just play Rocket League with my friends. I want, I want it. Yeah, but, but I'm kind of on the side with Doomsy that I'm not sure if the land build necessarily means you have to have different skill set. For Rocket League, like for Halo, like I know how that yeah. works, but I'm not sure if it matters as much for Rocket League. But again, like I didn't play on the land build. We should probably ask some of these pros and see how they compare it. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, that, a lot of it's mental. Uh, yeah, I think because like, when you... I mean, I'm just assuming it's pretty much the same as if you're playing single player offline. Um, yeah, your skills translate just as well on that than it is online. I mean, the only, the only problem with online is like a contest... A 50-50 contest you make might be slightly different because of the delay and it might go a certain direction, so it's harder to get an accurate one. I don't think your shots really change at all, to be honest. Like, you're pretty much always hitting the ball in the same place when you want to make a shot. You're not like adjusting for the lag. Uh, there's yeah. only really a 50-50 is that you ever have to do that. So I think for Rocket League, the, on, the land build is going to be 
pretty much the same, like in terms of what you'd be used to. Um, I don't think that's going to change whether people are really good on a uh, versus a LAN. I think it's just going to be the mental game that's really effective. And because this was the first LAN for most of the teams, I think that's going to be uh, the main factor. And that's why a lot of teams didn't, uh, you know, the, some teams did bad who were expected to be good and vice versa. And I think over time, as more LANs come out, the results online will start to match the results at the LAN more likely. So I think over time, um, Cosmic won't do as well versus Exodus who will do better and vice versa because they do well online. So I think that's what's going to happen over time. Well, I think some My players prediction. might just not be able to perform at LAN. I think that's going to yeah. happen. That There's going to be some that are just way too nervous and they just can't do it and they'll slowly be weeded out. Um, that's the only thing. Like, yeah, I don't think every single player will be able to translate <laughs> online to LAN, but I think most could. Um, but we'll just have to see. And, like, those game five overtimes, like, that's when you see some of these players, like, we'll see who shines at a LAN mm. with those plays, like, over zero with the overtime goal and stuff like that. Uh, those mm -hmm. plays do matter, but, again, it's a small sample size, so it's, it's hard to tell because, like, that yeah. could have easily been saved. You know, who knows? All mm. right. On that, let's move forward to the Q&A section. We'll do this pretty quickly because we're going a little long than what we wanted. Um... Ruben Honeychurch, great name. How far do you expect Doomsy to get? So James, let's predict how far <laughs> Doomsy goes. Yeah, here you go. In the RLCS season number two. Be I think they'll chance. make the. Uh, I think they will make the uh, regional playoffs. So week one or week two? So, Let me see uh, here. A top four or top six? Top six. Ooh, and then bounce? I don't know. But I think they'll make that at least. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think they're going to go in as a three seed. Oh. Not going to get top two just yet, because I think they're going to lose to like an eighth place team or something. And like bounce <laughs> them out from the top two. Like Lose to one of those uh, two bottom feeder teams that don't make playoffs, and that'll bounce them out of tie breaks or something. Um but I think they will make the regional playoffs week number two, make the top four, make the LAN. I think they could do some noise at the LAN because I think they're one of those teams a little bit more carefree. I think they might have some fun, but at the same time, it's the first one for them. I will give them a fourth place finish at the LAN. Seven. Doomsie, how Wait, far do you, you think you're going to go? <laughs> did you say we're going to the LAN, James? Uh, I said, I, oh, said I'm maybe. confident that you're going to finish at least uh, top six to make the regional playoffs. From there, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Okay, fair enough. Um, my prediction. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, go for it. We're going to win our RCS season two. That's my prediction. Oh, my God. Oh, snap. <laughs> Put it in the book. Put, Put it in, it in the Supersonic Avengers prediction book. <laughs> That's my you heard it here first. Prediction. That is my prediction. Exclusive. <laughs> yeah, my exclusive prediction. We're gonna win RSS season two. There you go. Wow. All right. You heard it here first. Alright, Prosperity 2K. <laughs> Do you guys like the cash prize money more spread out? I think we pretty much went over this. I think me and Doomsy were in favor. James, what about you? Yeah, no, I, I think it's good. I think to try to make it well, for one, from a viewer experience like when what are people playing for they're playing for money so every point in your tournament if it's like its own little subsection should be played for a cash prize and i like the fact that everybody regardless of placement will get paid so i am all for it i'm all for it i just hope we continue to see the price pool go up maybe the next one yeah. is like five hundred thousand. Oh, maybe we'll have a million seven, dollar prize pool one day seven billion dollars like <laughs> like if you guys like start playing for like twenty million dollars, I want to raise. <laughs> right? Me and James want raises then at least like, a little bit. This, uh, all this getting probably. paid in Trident layers and beef jerky is not it's not enough. working. Yeah. If they're if Doom's going to be fair, not like, like, to be fair, like, gosh, it's, uh, jerky XP, the jerky XP, James. <laughs> the jerky jerky brought to you by jerky XP. There you go. Jerky XP I, like, I actually have mine in my hospital bag. <laughs> Nice. Waiting to go to the hospital, so I'll be snacking on Jerky XP there. Um, <laughs> uh, it's David Zero. Who do you guys think has the current best chance of winning season two, and which teams do you think are going to fail? Um, well, you know who I think is going to win. 
Yeah. Well, Doomsy, <laughs> if Super Saiyan Avengers did not win, who do you got as the winner? So who's going to get second, then? Yes. <laughs> who's Northern Gate, right? Second? Um, um, Northern Gate, yeah, well... Flip you think side, about, right? But they did... They were, I don't know what they're doing at LAN. Nah, I don't think Flipside. No, I don't know. But Northern Gaming, I'm I a little worried no about. no idea. Buttons. You could pick... I could pick from Northern, Flipside, Cosmic again. I could pick Exodus. I don't know, like, any, to be honest. I could, uh, I'll pick make one. I want I'm, I'm going to pick... Um, um, I'll pick Northern. I think they'll redeem themselves a little bit. Phew. There you go. Northern? Northern. Okay. Northern. Northern game. So my worry uh, with Northern was when they lose at the RLCS, I was like, they might just tilt out of this tournament. Um, and they kind of did, but, I mean, like, they're playing good teams, obviously. But, like, if Northern just doesn't lose, then they're fine, which obviously every team is. But mm. they were a little tilty when it came to the <laughs> loss, which is great, like, analysis right there. But uh, we'll just leave it at that. I don't know. I, like, I'm a little worried about Northern, but I think that was a lot on Greasy <clears throat> for <throat> the tilt factor. I could be wrong. But so I'm worried about Flipside for that same reason of like Greasy might tilt a little hard. Like he was uh, well, even telling us he doesn't stream a lot because he tilts all the time when he's playing online. And then uh, we were playing Towerfall and that man was angry. <laughs> he's never played Towerfall in his life before and that man was angry. So who knows? Like sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. If I had to choose one team. James is correct with North America being the best. Kings of Urban is going to show up at land number two. I think their attitude uh, really helps them. And uh, I think if they get the ball rolling, I think they can have a good run mm -hmm. at the land. So I'll, I'll stick with my NA boys. I'll go Kings of Urban, though, instead of Kyle. Yeah, I'm, I'm on that bandwagon as well. All right, Kings of Urban. I like it. Uh, and then who's going to fail? Name one team that's like a surprise team that doesn't make land. How about? Genesis. That's not a surprise team, James. Well, then never mind. <laughs> cosmic. What? Ooh, no. the Cosmic. I'm joking. I said you're going to like... get all the NA fanboy, <laughs> land, land boy fanboys joking. out I'm at joking. you. I'm joking. My name's Doomsy. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> too good. Uh, That's too spot on. One, all right, so one <laughs> team shit. not Just to like, make oh, LAN. Um, I can't say know. Astrum, right? Because they're like... Are they favored to be the four seed, you think, or Team Enjoy? Team Enjoy. Team Enjoy still? Yeah, I'll put them over. Um, you know what? Mm. It's, too early. it's too early to say that. I'm going to go Northern Gaming, just for the hell of it. Because like, i got to choose one of the good teams. I think they will I will never it. doubt yeah. Maestro and Remco. Those guys are in those, I, I didn't. I didn't get to hang out with them a bunch online, but they're yeah, such good absolutely. people. I'm so sad you said that, Gibbs. I'm offended. Well, like I have to choose from like the top five is basically what I'm choosing from. Like Flipside, Northern Gaming, or the three from North America. I don't see the three from North America not making it. Maybe Cosmic, but uh, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Why not? We'll throw it out to the Northern Gaming because it's fun to just have people get really mad at me for predicting wrong. So. <laughs> All right, so so out of those five, Doomsy, who does not make the LAN? We won't include your boys. So. Uh, flip side. Okay. <laughs> yeah, both on the Europe side. See, Europe is going to be tough. I think like, even in the open qualifiers, we could see some surprises. So, like, I think if like that could happen, like it would be like hell has frozen over, but Northern Gaming maybe just doesn't make league play, and that's how they don't go to the LAN. So I think that weekend's gonna be really, really hard for all of these teams. That is going to be the way. No, I don't think if if yeah. the top five teams get into league, but I'm pretty sure they'd all go through to the top I think five. So too. Like, I think gaming is gonna kick everyone in the teeth. Yeah, we see. Like, I'm upset Savage. because like Remco and Maestro are just like so beautiful, and now they're not gonna. And Pashi like even online is a man. Super like, god. and like you would think a Northern Gaming like that attractive team. You would think they would get less attractive if they swap players. They just got more attractive. Yeah, them. and they got hype. And now they're all blonde. They're all <laughs> blonde. It's the perfect boy band. They're just going to sing bye, bye, bye to every single team as they kick them out. It's going to be great. All right, James, out of those five teams, who doesn't make the line? Mm. I mean, we're all probably going to be wrong, so it's fine. Yeah. Um. God. I don't know. I don't want to say. 
Jake, flip side. That's not the point. Oh, flip side. See, we're all going oh, on Europe's how side. Because I think yeah, we N- all N-A think Europe's first. just way more competitive. Yeah. But like NA has been getting more competitive. Like Exodus. Like I was talking to Garrett. He's really worried about making it to the land because of like momentum and stuff like that coming up. So mm. it's a little word. A little word. Um, all right. Thoughts on non-standard maps for RLCS season two? I know James hates Wasteland. I do too. From Matt Rogers. Um, they had non standard in the first time, but it was just Wasteland, and literally everyone hates Wasteland. They should just keep it what they had. Do not. My thing is just don't force people. Do not force people. If they don't like to play it and people don't like to watch it, don't make them play it. Just do what we did. Well, they're in not this last forcing. Format. That's what I'm saying. It's is a don't choice. Make, don't force. Oh, That's okay, what I'm okay. saying. Yeah, just yeah, continue yeah. to keep it. Unforced. Oh yeah, for for sure. Like, I think it should be a choice, and I think teams that do try and play a lot of wasteland in Neo Tokyo might have that advantage in a five game series if they start practicing that map. Like I don't know how like how much practice like gets you on those two maps. I think a good team can just compete on them, but like say a lower end team is playing Northern Gaming in a best of five, they're like, you know, fuck it, let's choose wasteland and Neo Tokyo. Try and throw them off. Maybe it works. Mm, and that's what them. I want to see. Some of these lower teams like. Let's actually try and like practice this map a lot and try and like throw these teams off a bit and maybe it'll work. Like, I know Cosmic loves Neo Tokyo, so they're probably going to choose it every time. Um, I don't know about the other teams. I know some teams like Neo Tokyo compared to Wasteland. Hopefully, we get to see that map more. I think it'll be more interesting. But I do agree that it should like be a choice. Still, that makes sense. I think it's just much more exciting to watch. That, isn't it like I don't know like if you're watching DFH over and over again or like just I could watch DFH over. all day. I don't know about you no, guys. No, I'm so bored of it now. I, 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 I don't know. Like, I don't know. I DFH know, just, locker room is a pretty good show. I don't know. <laughs> <I'll watch it. laughs> yeah, let's play. let make that a map play in the locker room. There you go. Nice. But yeah, like just I mean, imagine Neo Tokyo. It's just like the grand finals and everyone's playing. The, 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 the Japanese skyline. Yeah, maybe if we had there. more just, oh, finalized and polished maps to pick from, because we honestly yes. don't have that many. Like, I want to see map diversity like crazy. Reskin Cosmic. Yes. If Cosmic was reskinned, sword, I think that's that is the best map. If you increase the goal heights, I just got to repeat that. Increase the goal heights. Skin it, sword. James's company. <laughs> sorry, yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry, guys. How dare you, guys? It's a grill. That's right. <laughs> we're almost done. We're almost done. Tell her we're almost done. Just hide be- behind your giant head. We'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I want to see more maps just because I think it's more fun to see map diversity. But if teams choose not to choose it, that's fine too. But I really hope we see some of these like teams that probably have a less chance to beat a northern game in our flip side. Choose these maps to try and throw them off. Like, even if it doesn't work, it's worth a shot compared to always playing center. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Lagging Dragon, last question. Are you ever going to play competitive again? And this was meant for me, but we'll throw it at James as well. Uh, James, want to take it first? Yeah, I plan on it. I'm just waiting for... I mean, I, I want to do more online tournaments and go to any events that are non-RLCS related. The problem that both me and you will have, Gibbs, is that really competitive teams are not going to want a teammate that can't play in the biggest tournament there is so i'm still yeah. gonna play for fun because i just like to compete yeah like i agree like I, I, I would play for fun but the thing is i literally have not played like at all for the past like month <laughs> so like i would play just for the hell of it but more on like fun teams that don't expect to do anything too crazy uh but i don't plan on like playing competitive anymore like uh, once the baby comes anyway It'll be like zero game time unless I'm doing videos or I'm playing with a kid or something. Maybe we'll start doing some 2v2s, me and the kid versus some players. Aww. So there you go. We'll do that. <laughs> but no, I don't plan on playing competitive. Like I think me and James have a pretty awesome spot right now at the RLCS, and we enjoy being on the desk or casting or whatever and watching the games and uh, just talking shit about Doomsie all day is a lot of fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. Amen. Amen, brother. All right, and that'll do it, guys, <laughs> for DFH Locker Room number, I don't even remember, 17. And thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next week, maybe? Look out for James Bot dancing video, maybe? Oh, yeah, let's get some of that. Maybe. <laughs>